So in this presentation, I will describe the experimental observation of a focusing duct brake flows. This work has been achieved at the Laboratoire Interdisciplinaire Carnot de Bourgogne from the University in Burgundy in Dijon in France and experimentally all the results have been achieved by Frédéric Odo. So here is how my presentation will be organized. I will first introduce the different nonlinear structures that may exist in a fiber with nonlinearity. Then I will describe the box problem that we investigate by using numerical simulation. And uh, before conclusion, I will of course describe our experimental observation that we have achieved using uh, all fibered uh, experimental setup. So when an ultra short pulse propagates in a fiber, it is affected mainly by two effects. The first one is a linear effect and this is dispersion. It takes into account the fact that the velocity depends on the frequency and usually the, we use the coefficient beta 2 which is the second order dispersion uh, coefficient. The other effect, this is linked to the kernel linearity of uh, uh, silica and it takes into account that the velocity also depends on the intensity of the pulse. And to model it, we introduce a coefficient gamma, which is linked to the nonlinear coefficient of the fiber. So these two effects can be quite easily taken into account using an equation which seems very simple. Uh, this is the nonlinear Schrodinger equation. So uh, this equation is uh, quite uh, short, but as we will see, it can already predict a large range of very different nonlinear structures. And among the nonlinear structures, we, we really have to make the difference between what can be observed in the normal regime of dispersion when beta 2 is positive and what is uh, able to exist in the anomalous regime of dispersion when beta 2 is negative. Of course, the uh, most famous uh, structures, this is the bright solitons that can only exist in the anomalous regime on this dispersion. Uh, those are wave uh, with a very specific pearl shape and they are able to propagate over very long distance without uh, experiencing any change of the temporal and spectral intensity profile. In the normal regime of dispersion, there is uh, the, their counterpart, they, those are the dark solitons. But uh, we can also find very different structures such as the dispersion shock wave that exists when a neutral short pulse propagates in a normal fi in a fiber with normal dispersion. In this case, the edge of the pulse became sharper and sharper, and at the point of the propagation, we have a gradient uh, catastrophe, and uh, this gradient catastrophe is then regularized through uh, the dispersions and it leads to the appearance of strong oscillations in the wings of the pulse. And these oscillations, they come from the central part of the pulse and they evolve towards the outer part of the pulse. Uh, they, once they are formed, these oscillations, they, may, they are maintained and they can be a very strong dip over the wings in the pulse and these dips can be uh, very close from a dark solitons. Those nonlinear structures can also interact. This is what uh, we have shown in an article uh, uh, where we have studied the optical ondula bars. Another problem, very interesting problem on nice result that have been obtained uh, in Lynn in France by uh, the group of Arnaud Mousseau is the evolution of uh, a dam of a dam break. Here, uh, this is a super Gaussian pulse, something that is very uh, rectangular, 
and uh, it will evolve in the normal regime of dispersion. And we have near this super Gaussian pulse, which is also called a box, a continuous background here. And during the propagation in the fiber, the main part of the pulse will overlap here the continuous background and it will lead to various uh, stages and in one stages we can see here some uh, strong fluctuations so here very nice uh, result published uh, recently where the box problem evolves toward here very strong uh, oscillations that move from the center part to uh, the outer part of uh, the, the wave. In the case of the anomalous uh, dispersion regime, we do not observe dispersive shock wave. But there are other nonlinear structures that differ from the barite solitons. Those are uh, the solitons over finite by ground. And the best known example, this is the Peregrine Breaver, which is a mathematical solution that has been suggested as soon as 1983 by Owell Peregrine. Its mathematical expression is rather simple. This is a rational polynomial. And one of uh, its striking uh, features, this is that it appears from nowhere and then disappears without leaving any trace. So th this structure was proposed in the early 80s, but it has only been demonstrated in 2010 by uh, our group in Dijon. And we can see here that the prediction from the mathematical expression can be really uh, observed in an optical fiber thanks to the nonlinear propagation in the anomalous regime of dispersion. Since then, it has uh, stimulated many other works. Uh, some of them are very recent and they have confirmed all the crucial uh, importance that this kind of structure may have for the understandings of rock wave and of what may happen in the turbulence uh, propagation. So, now, what have we studied more precisely? Well, here uh, we were interested in the propagation of a box, uh, so a super Gaussian pulse, that evolves in an linear fiber, but this time not in the normal regime of dispersion, but in the anomalous regime of dispersion. And in this numerical simulation, we have considered a long uh, input pulse with a duration of a few hundreds of picoseconds. Uh, and the, the fiber that we have considered, this is the most standard uh, fiber that we have. This is the fiber that is used for telecommunications. This is the SMF28. And what can we see? We can see that there are uh, kinds of oscillation that appears in the wings of the pulse. But contrary to what happens in the regime of normal dispersion, these oscillation, they appear in the outer part of the pulse and then evolves toward the center of the pulse. So this is a major difference, uh, which is simply explained because here we are in a focusing uh, propagation. If we now have a closer look at what happens here in the first stage, we can see another difference. Indeed, what we see is the seed that, uh, in fact, the structure uh, breathes. It experiences a stage of compression and then it uh, disappears. And we, have, uh, we observe this uh, on a periodic fashion. So here, this is also very different from the uh, dispersive shock wave that may be observed in the normal regime of dispersion because when uh, the structure appears in the normal regime of dispersion, it is maintained and does not intrinsically change of properties. Here we really see this briefing uh, that is quite typical of the structures that exist in the anomalous regime of dispersion. 
it is also of, uh, interesting to have a closer look at the profile uh, that can be measured at the point of maximum compression. And what uh, is interesting to see this is that the temporal intensity profile can be well fitted by the shape of a peregrine uh, solitans. Moreover, moreover, when we have a look at the temporal phase profile, we can see that we have a typical pi phase shift in the wings of the pulse, and all those features they uh, are very close from the peregrine solitans. This is why we can say that in this evolution of a box in the anomalous regime, we observe a dynamics that is very typical of peregrine-like uh, pulse. We can also have a look at the spectrum, and once again, the analytical shape of the peregrine solitand, uh, which is plotted here uh, in light blue, is very close from the result that we can obtain from the numerical simulation. The only difference is, is that we have here a very strong modulation, which is a sinusoidal modulation of the wings, and uh, this modulation is very simply explained. This is just because that we have two structures that uh, emerge symmetrically with respect to the center. They are delayed, so there will be an interference between these two coherent structures that will lead to this typical spectral uh, interference pattern. So now, if I want to provide a very simplified picture of what may happen, we start from a super Gaussian pulse. In the first stages of propagation, uh, we have a highly nonlinear propagation, uh, so the main effect this is cell phase modulation. So there is a strong chirp that develops in the wings of the pulse, and contrary to the usual pulses such as uh, Gaussian or hyperbolic second pulses, the chirp at the center of the pulse is here flat, and the chirp is only significant in the uh, side in the side uh, of the super Gaussian pulse. So, due to the accumulation of nonlinearity, the chirp becomes higher and higher in the wings, and after a given distance of propagation, the the anomalous regime will affect uh, this highly chirp pulse. And as we are in the focusing regime, part of the energy in the wings will uh, evolve towards the center of the pulse. So as the frequency in the center and in the wings is different, it will create an interference pattern, uh, an oscillation in the intensity profile. And what is known, this is that whenever you have an intensity modulation, of a uh, wave over continuous background, it evolves in the anomalous regime of dispersions towards a peregrine-like uh, wave. And this is why we may expect to have a, a soliton of a continuous background uh, wave. So all this, this is a very simplified pictures. And if you want to have a more precise picture of what happens, you can read uh, two articles that really try to describe uh, mathematically what happens and to really prove the nature of those different uh, coherent nonlinear structure that emerge in this problem. So really, uh, you can find many details f about the mathematical uh, things uh, that may be observed in the in similar configurations. And now, if uh, we go uh, further in the propagations, we also observe here uh, strong oscillation in the central part. And if we magnify it, we see that they are not uh, similar to the one observed in the wing. In fact, those oscillations over uh, the central plateau, they appear due to 
spontaneous modulation instability that ultimately develops in the central part. So this kind of spontaneous structures, we don't want uh, to observe them. So to avoid them and also to clearly see what happens when the uh, various periodic like structure collide, what uh, we do this is uh, to we will we reduce the temporal duration of the pulse, and we will only consider a pulse with around five uh, tenths of picoseconds of durations. And if we run against the numerical simulation, we can see that the same trends are observed. We have uh, peregrine-like waves, and even at the stage of the collisions, when the various nonlinear structure uh, here collide, we observe a temporal intensity profile that is very close from uh, the peregrine typical uh, wave. So now, what do we observe uh, on from the experimental uh, point of view? Our experimental device is only made of commercially available components uh, uh, from the telecommunication industry. So we start from a continuous wave laser that we intensity modulate using an electrical pattern generator. Here, this is crucial to start from a pulse with a very uh, nice plateau, straight edges, and uh, without any bump on the top of the plateau, and also a pulse which is highly symmetrical. Then, uh, in order to remove as much as possible of uh, noise, we use an optical bandpass filter. We amplify the pulse. Uh, so here is the typical intensity profiles of uh, the experimental pulse that we generate. And the nonlinear propagation is achieved uh, by using different uh, propagation length of single mole fiber. So from one kilometer up to 3.7 kilometer of propagations. And at the output, we measure the spectrum and we measure also the temporal intensity profile using an optical sampling oscilloscope that allows us to reach a temporal resolution of the order of the picosecond. And here are the typical results that uh, we may record we can see that the results from uh, the experimental measurement are, uh, are in clear agreement with the numerical uh, predictions. So, uh, more precisely, here is the longitudinal evolution of the temporal intensity profile. And we clearly see that we have ultra short structures that appear in the wings of the pulse that uh, those structures collide at the center of the pulse. If we, if we compare uh, those uh, experimental results uh, to the numerical prediction, we can see that we have a very, an excellent agreement. Uh, the results that we see are fully in line with uh, the numerics. We can uh, uh, have a closer look to what happened at the point of maximum compression here. Once again, uh, the experimental results in blue are clearly reproduced by the numerical simulation in white, and they are in agreement in, with uh, the analytical peregrine breather shape. It is also true at the point of uh, collision between the nonlinear structure. Now, uh, let us see uh, the, the result uh, regarding the spectrum. We can see that the breathing is also observed on the spectrum. We can here clearly identify the point of maximal uh, temporal compression, which leads to the broadest uh, spectrum uh, that is recording of the optical spectrum analyzer. We can also see that uh, we, are, we uh, have here a strong modulation 
uh, that is sinusoidal of the uh, spectrum measure at the point of maximum compression. This is in line with uh, the numerical simulations and the shape is triangular, so uh, wings that are linearly decreasing when the results are plotted on a logarithmic scale. This is typical uh, from the analytical peregrine uh, breather. At the point of maximum, uh, at the point, sorry, uh, of collision, the structure is more complex, but we can see that we have all uh, the, the trends that we are expecting. We have made all the kind of measurements, and all the measurements uh, that we made were uh, very close from the prediction of the nonlinear Schrödinger equations. So to conclude, we have studied the evolution of a box in a nonlinear focusing medium. The nonlinear dynamics is very different from the one we can see uh, f uh, when we study a bell-shaped pulse, such as a Gaussian pulse or an hyperbolic second pulse. We observed peregrine-like breathers that emerge from each side of the super Gaussian pulse, and this uh, breather ultimately uh, can collide. We have carried uh, this experiment uh, uh, using very standard fiber, and we don't need uh, we don't need specific fiber to reach an excellent agreement between the numerical simulations and the theoretical expectations. And once again, it confirms that uh, a fiber working at the te telecommunication wavelength is, in, is, in excellent, uh, is an excellent tool to study various nonlinear problems. This is a perfect test bed. So if you want some more details, uh, you can find a preprint here of all this work and uh, the French archive. So thank you for your attention.